Since 2020, I've been rebuilding my closet. Now, because I didn't have the budget to go out and buy everything all at once, I had to work within a capsule closet philosophy and choose everything carefully to get maximum bang for my buck. Everything I chose had to be extremely versatile and have multiple uses. So I bought sweaters that I could use at work, at home and at the weekends, for example. So today I'm going to talk about the bare minimum essentials I used to build a beautiful and functional wardrobe from scratch. I'm keeping each category quite general because a capsule closet is something quite personal, I think. I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy five t-shirts, for example, but I am going to show you some specific essentials from my own closet, as well as talk about the general principles that I think everyone should follow if you want to create a chic capsule wardrobe that works hard for you. So let's get into it. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and we'll make sure you never miss another video like this one. Let's go. Quality outerwear is essential. I put this item first in this video, but in reality, I left buying outerwear to last, probably because it tends to be one of the most expensive things we can add to our wardrobes. But while it is more expensive, good outerwear can carry an outfit. It can also cover an outfit and give you two outfits in one, depending on whether you wear it open or closed. Let me show you. For where I live, I need a minimum of three different types of outerwear. I need a wool version or at least a warm version, like this black coat from Hobbs. I also need a weather resistant version for the spring going into summer months, like this trench in the middle here that I got from Massimo Duty, And of course, a waterproof version. Um, that's this cream raincoat, raincoat you see on the right hand side, which I got from an Irish brand called Dunn Stores. I'd also recommend using a long line version of outerwear rather than the shorter one. I think it's really clear here when you see them lined up side by side that the longer trench is more flattering on me than both of the shorter line coats. A longer line coat is more versatile in my opinion because you can create a whole different outfit and a whole different look just by deciding whether you want to wear it open or closed. Also, a longer line has the added bonus of making me look a little bit taller and at a petite five foot two i will take all of the inches i can get so for all of those reasons i do prefer a longer line coat and those are the ones that i will be concentrating on adding to my wardrobe now over the next year or so depending on the climate or the season blazers are another excellent choice of outerwear and i find that they do a lot of hard work for you even though it's so easy to just pull them on over any outfit so for example here, I'm literally just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. It's a linen t-shirt from Mango and the jeans are from a Goldie. So jeans and a t-shirt, such a simple casual pairing, but then pulling the blazer over the top gives a totally different vibe to the outfit. It definitely dresses it up and makes it look like I've put in way more effort than I actually did. <laughs> This is a navy blazer I bought from Karen Millen last year because it reminded me so much of the Balmain blazer and I just couldn't pass it up. But honestly, my heart dominated my head there because this blazer is mostly made out of polyester. So I probably wouldn't buy it again, but I still love it. This blazer, however, I bought from And Other Stories last year as well. And I definitely do not regret anything about it. It's a linen and cotton mix. I'll be bringing it on holidays with me. I wear it all the time. I absolutely love it. It's so breezy and comfortable. So this one is a keeper. And I love how it improves the simplest of outfits. A pointed toe shoe will carry you a long way, regardless of whether it's flat, heeled or a boot. And they have the added bonus of lengthening your legs too. So they're always flattering to wear. These ones are from Zara and quite simply, they are my most worn shoe. They're 100% leather. I got them, I think about a year and a half ago now, and they are incredibly versatile. They go with so many different outfits. Another benefit of a pointed toe shoe is that the narrow pointed toe will balance out silhouettes if you want to wear more oversized or voluminous pieces. So for example, here I'm wearing wide leg jeans there's a lot of volume in these pants, 
but wearing the pointed toe ankle boot at the end narrows my silhouette right at the end. It results in a lovely contrast and balances out the whole look of the outfit. I'm doing a side-by-side -side demo here of an older pair of round-toed boots with the Zara heeled boots. Now, you can see straight away that the Zara boots are far more flattering on and just look a lot better with this outfit. Now, granted, this demonstration is a bit of an exaggeration between two styles because the boots on the left are contrasting color to my pant, which never helps. Um, and they do have two wide points. They have a wide point mid calf and they have a wide point at the toe area as well because a round toe is always going to look wider than a pointed toe. But even if these boots had been in black, they still would not have looked as good with this outfit as the sock boots from Zara do. The Zara boots have narrow points at the ankles and at the toes and end up giving a much more elongated, flattering look to my legs overall. I got these boots years ago and I did wear them and love them for years and years. I even got them resold and mended a couple of times. But for me, as my wardrobe evolves, I think that a pointed toe sock boot is the piece that will always have a place in my closet. If you're enjoying this video so far, remember to smash that like button because it helps the video to reach more people. Now, I'm picking trousers instead of skirts here because I live in a cold and windy country. Ideally, I would have both, but if I had to choose just one, it has to be trousers. But regardless of whether you pick trousers or skirts, the principles should remain the same. You should pick them in good quality fabrics, that's key, in a shape that's flattering for you. So for example, for myself, I have shorter legs in proportion to my overall height. So for me, a high-waisted pant is always the thing I will reach for first. These trousers are from H&M. They're simply called their ankle length trousers and they bring them out year after year in a range of colors. They're made of 100% viscose, so they're very soft and flowy and breathable. Beautiful to wear in warmer weather. There is an elastic waist at the back and pleating in the front, so you get the comfort and yet the kind of structure of the pant as well. So best of both worlds, in my opinion. These run a bit small, so I would size up, but um, I got these in my usual size and <laughs> they're a bit snug, but they're still comfortable. Knitwear quickly became an essential for me after I started buying it in natural fabrics. Before that, I had so many acrylic blend pieces and I was never comfortable in them. I was always too hot or too cold and they always looked unflattering on me in a way that I could never quite figure out. For me, the discovery of cashmere sweaters was a revelation. And as I've said in previous videos, these don't have to break the bank. The first one I'm going to show you is a cashmere sweater from Everlane that I got on sale for less than 50 euro. So it's always worth keeping your eye out for these types of pieces. This design was replaced with a new design, but essentially they're still crew neck cashmere sweaters and they have them in loads of colors. They're really, really beautiful to wear. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that this sweater is the one I cannot live without. It is called the Leontine and it's from Cezanne. It's made of 100% organic cotton and again, incredibly breathable. It keeps me warm in winter and so far has kept me cool during the warmer days in the springtime. So, and it goes with everything. It is just so, so beautiful and versatile. It's from Cezanne's Essentials range, which means that theoretically at least, it's available all year round when it's not sold out, of course. This one runs large. I got it in a size small, but I like the slightly oversized feel to it. Definitely my favorite sweater in my wardrobe. Tops in good quality fabrics are now an absolute must for me. I will never ever again suffer inside a top that makes me feel hot and sweaty. Goodbye polyester. I have far less tops now than I used to have, but I get far more wear out of them because they make me feel comfortable. So I enjoy putting them on, which means I reach for them more. Let me show you some of my favorite, most versatile tops that I currently have in my closet. Besides my sweaters, my silk shirts are the items in my wardrobe that I reach for the most. I have two. This first white one you've seen before because I'm wearing it during the majority of this video. 
and it is the clean silk relaxed shirt from Everlane. Again, it seems to be a year round staple for them, but it is often sold out. It is worth checking. I got mine in a US size six and I find it's perfect on me. My second one is this beautiful silk shirt from Cezanne. It's called their Chloe shirt and again, comes in a variety of colors. It has a wonderful lace detail around the collar and beautiful buttons on the sleeves. The sleeves are almost balloon-like, but I think that might be because they're slightly too short for my petite length arms. But nevertheless, it gives a really nice kind of billowy effect through the arm, which I really enjoy. So win-win. It's an extremely versatile shirt. It dresses up jeans. I can wear it to work, all the while being comfortable and breathable as well. Next category is quality accessories, namely scarves, belts and bags. If you're looking to build a chic capsule wardrobe, I think a silk scarf is a must. This one is from Arquette and it's 100% silk and was only 55 euro, which I think was a really good price for 100% silk. The silk is very good quality, glossy and soft as you'd expect. And I found it very versatile so far. I've worn it with my trench coat. It goes great to the black top. And of course, I've worn it around my bag handles as well. I did find that the brown pops against my limited color palette of black, white, and blue. So the brown color for me has proven very versatile. A good handbag is an essential. A handbag can finish off an outfit. It can single-handedly make a basic outfit look interesting all the while being functional and practical as well. Wow, no wonder we spend so much on them. I'm going to show you two bags and the first is the straw bag from French Connection. Now I bought this in store. It is a limited edition or so it said on the tags. So I'm not sure if it's available anymore. I give a lot more details about this bag in my new in for spring video, which I'll leave linked in the description box for you. It's a really nice addition to my wardrobe, not too bulky and perfect for spring and summer weather. And I love to elevate it just by wrapping a silk scarf around it. The second bag I want to show you is this black quilted leather one from DKNY. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll have seen this bag as well. I love how versatile it is because of that strap. So the strap is perfect to carry it as a shoulder bag, as you can see here. All I've done is I've crossed the bottom parts of the strap underneath the flap. And if I do not do that, you can see that here, I can wear it cross body with the strap at full length. This bag has worked incredibly hard for me over the years, but like outerwear, I have put off buying bags simply because they are the priciest items in a wardrobe. And I really needed to get everything else first. <laughs> But now that I have a solid foundation built up, I am going to focus more on adding some really high quality bags to my collection. And um, that is certainly my goal for 2023 at the latest. Um, here again with this uh, little black bag, you can see that again, just by folding the straps in, it changes the whole look of the bag and it can be worn just as a kind of a clutch bag instead, which is really handy. Last but not least in the accessories category are belts. And this little beauty is the Lecce belt from Isabel Morant. As you can see, it has no hardware, no buckle, which means that it is so easy to style with so many different things. Um, I absolutely love it so much that I actually bought it in brown as well. It is made of a really supple leather and I love the knot detail that it ties into. Uh, it's very artistic and minimal at the same time. So a belt like this will always elevate any look that you care to use it with. And for that reason, it has become the essential belt in my wardrobe. An outfit just doesn't look finished without jewellery. Personally, I always go with minimal, delicate jewellery, but I think statement pieces work just as well. It all depends on your personal preference. This tends to be my everyday look, where I've layered some gold-plated necklaces from Pilgrim with some simple solid gold huggy earrings from my local jeweler. I've paired that up with my silver and gold watch that I wear every day. I also like to wear this little gold uh, bracelet from Pilgrim. What I love about it is it has this beautiful little freshwater pearl dangling from the end, which I think is really pretty. 
on a day I want to go simple yet classic, I'll wear this Misoma padlock necklace, for example. It has beautiful rope chain. And I also love wearing this Gold Vermeil link necklace with blue enamel pieces. It was a birthday gift from my parents. And I do love how jewelry can symbolize the things that are most important to us. So they really help add not just beauty, but personality to an outfit and depth as well. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you have someone in your life that you think would find this helpful, feel free to share this video with them. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.